Well, here we are. It is Friday, March 8, 2024, and this is the weekly video. We do these every Friday. We take a look see what's been going on in the auction market, auctions that have taken place, auctions that we talked about previously that were coming up. We're going to take a look back today and see how some of those items did. Number of lots closed this week, and uh, we'll be updating the uh, global pages this weekend because I noticed uh, just a little while ago when I was pulling up prices that uh, a number of sales closed. And I, want, I want to go through them. Uh, and as you know, we've been putting up uh, some extra content this week because we wanted to talk about the Christie sale and we want to talk about the bottom sale with the uh, Met Day accessions and we'll be doing a video uh, in the next couple of days about the upcoming Sotheby sales and there's uh, some other auctions coming too. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's almost amazing how many auctions there are um, right now even for Asia Week and coming from it's interesting how um, not just the major auction houses but the, 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 the next group of auction houses the ones that are not quite as big are uh, really getting into the game on uh, Asia Week including uh, Heinemann's in Chicago and, and or Freeman Galleries, they're now joined, and so forth. We're going to talk about that, and uh, we're going to do a full video on those that sale, but we're going to touch on it lightly. Uh, but first, before we get started, I just wanted to uh, 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 take a look at uh, a couple of results from this week from sales that we had uh, been tracking and uh, see how they did. These are the ones that we talked about in preview videos of the last couple of weeks, and we're going to start with William Smith's sale up in New Hampshire. And this was a sale we thought was awfully nice. Um, uh, he's an old time auctioneer he's been around for years and this was a, a very good sale and it, like all new england sales it's got early american furniture um, uh, jewelry chinese art persian rugs and so forth and uh, it's, it was a very interesting and i think a pretty successful auction as, as they is typically are and it was interesting to see how some of the american furniture did also uh because there seems to be a, a little bump um, coming um, interest in it. I think it's because people are sick of living with Ikea. And I've talked about that in previous videos, as some of you know, uh, uh, is, is that a lot of people are getting to the point where they want to own nice things and they don't want to look like they're still living in a college dorm. So they're, they're going to start buying finer furnishings for their homes. And uh, we noticed some pretty good prices, but not shocking prices, still prices well below, um, in many cases, what you would pay for something that was modern coming out of a, a, a department store or, or a high-end uh, decorators uh, shop with modern things so that that's sort of an interesting event um, I, I've always said if you want to buy nice furniture buy it at an auction uh, you'll save a fortune any rate uh, let's uh, hop on over and see how the uh, Chinese stuff did this was one of the things I thought was very nice it was a mid 19th century uh, reverse painting on glass of a Chinese scene and the pair sold for a thousand dollars plus their buyer's premium and these were nice they were still in their original frames these very classic China trade frames they, I don't know if they're original frames or not they might have been no they, they appear to be the original or overall or in matching frames yep uh, these these were typical of china trade frames by the way black with gilt edges and they did the, made them in china and the other thing that's interesting about these pictures is that the glass was all imported from from europe um, they, the Chinese didn't make sheet glass. So the Europeans would bring sheet glass in. As I talked about last week about the guy that had the, the Stuart painting and he had uh, of Washington and he, he brought sheets of glass to China and had them, I think he had a hundred of them made and, and, and um, Gilbert Stuart ended up, I think it was Gilbert Stuart, ended up suing him for um, copyright infringement. It was one of the earliest cases of copyright infringement in America. But anyway, these were very, very nice. And these are good size pictures. They're 15, uh, overall size was 18 by 24 each. And somebody picked them up for $1,000. And I suspect they went reasonably because how are you going to ship them? You know, so it, I'm, I'm going to bet they went to a local buyer and the estimates were very, was very low on it, four to $600. That was sort of a bargain estimate. And then there was this, this very, very nice Chinese export miniature painting of probably of a sea captain or a businessman, but usually it's a young ship captain, uh, meticulously done. If you've ever seen these little miniatures they did, uh, they're absolutely amazing. Uh, the quality, the detail is, is mind boggling. And it was in this beautiful little case, it looks nice. And it sold for 1100 plus premium, um, which is fine. That's 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 what they're worth. This picture was probably done in the uh, about 1830, 1840, somewhere in there. All right. And then this was also in that sale. This was nice. I pointed it out because it was very big. Um, it, it measured 17 inches tall and 13 inches wide. It was inlaid with silver. 
um, a, a nice looking thing. And uh, this was a 19th century example. It had its original stand, which was great because often they don't. The stands get separated and get lost and often they don't have it. And the uh, food dog on the top looked to be in very, very nice condition. Uh, a male food dog with, the, with his hand on the ball. And uh, it sold for $1,000 also. Not a bad buy. That was a good buy. If this had sold for 2000 I wouldn't have been surprised because it was inlaid with silver. It was big and had a nice original untouched patina to it. And then this, this was a sort of a bargain of the week. I don't know why it didn't bring more money, to be honest with you. It only sold for $175, and this was a nice early Celadon bowl. It was, it's not a high-end fancy one, but it's genuine, and it looked awfully nice to me. I, and I thought, you know, it's a nice old bowl. The interior was all in sites decorated, and uh, the, the, the bottom of it, I suspect, was fairly crusty and crude. But it was the real deal, and somebody picked up a nice, I'm not convinced it was Long Quan. I think it was maybe a little after that. But not long after, uh, the Long Quan kilns were, were, I think, were closed about the time this was made. But I need to see the bottom. At any rate, $175 for that. That was a very good buy. And that was on. These were all on the global member pages, or on the, or on the Patreon um, uh, global pages as well. All right, and then this. I talked about this because I thought this was great, and I loved how the the fact that they they showed it in scale to an uh, uh, an employee at the auction house. Uh, uh, to just show how visually successful this was. Love the uh, the sort of it looked like the three star gods or something, and then this beautiful gilt work around the outside against a red lacquer background. Um, there it is, a nicely done late 19th century, mid to late 19th century. Went for $1,200, but fantastically decorative. A lot of bang for the buck in that. That's a good thing. And then, um, let's see, what is this on this? Oh, yeah, the um, this is the recumbent bronze elephant incense burner. I thought this was great. We, I talked about it before the sale. I, I thought it was very nice. It had a wonderful face on him. I love the, the, the sleepy eye here that you see often in, in, in Chinese and Japanese elephants when they're depicted. This is a Japanese bronze done during the Edo period, probably in the first half of the 19th century, sort of toward the end of the Edo. But beautifully done, beautiful casting, not dented, and, and good size. There's the top of it. I love this. This was a great little animal. And uh, it was uh, eight inches, uh, five inches high, eight inches wide. It was a good size uh, incense burner. And it sold for 950 plus the premium, which is, as you know, is either 25 or 30. Whatever it is their buyer's premium, 25%. There you go. And then this, this I think was a bargain. And if somebody went and saw this, I want to know why this went for so little money. Or was it just uh, people being leery about carved jades? But this was a very nice, I think, a very nice piece of jade um, uh, from what I can see of it. Uh, the details of the insect carving are exceptional, and you don't usually see them done like this on modern fakes. I do not believe for a second that this was modern, so I don't know why it went for so little. I, uh, I'm at a loss to understand. It's a beautiful little lotus pod. Um, Sold for just $650 plus the premium. That was a bargain. That was, that was the bargain of the sale, I think. Um, very nice piece of jade. And then the box, um, the, the ivory box uh, that you, you somehow they got around the, the rules on that um, and got it through. And uh, as I mentioned uh, when we talked about it earlier, as you may recall, I talked about ivory boxes in a video, my uh, carvings and things that I collect. And I have, I have, a, I have an ivory box from the same period. And uh, uh, this one was wonderfully carved, beautifully carved, heavily carved, um, uh, done probably around 18... Oh, 1810 to 1840, 1830, somewhere in there. But wonderful quality, and it was in good condition. It had the, the, the foot, I think, the base on it was added later, um, I suspect. That doesn't look like Chinese work. But uh, it wasn't uncommon for people in the West to add feet to them and do things. 2400 plus the premium, so around $3,000 all said and done. But a rare, a rare, wonderful decorative box. Beautiful thing. And uh, then over this, the ship, the export uh, uh, lacquered uh, 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 tea caddy and incense burner combo set. Uh, this was a great thing also. Also from the second half of the 19th century because it's a steam wheeler. And I think the first steam wheeler was a British one that went over there around, uh, I think around 1870 or 80. And it was quite a, quite a sensation. Uh, but here, here the Chinese uh, uh, workers put this together in lacquer. It was a nice size object. That was a great visual thing. It looked fantastic up you know, on a, on a sideboard in a, live, in a dining room or on a, a nice bookshelf in a library. It would be a, quite, a, quite an accent piece. And it's a nice historic item because it, you know where, roughly when it was made. And uh, it measured uh, 20 inches long, so it wasn't small. 
uh, sold for $2,800, way over the estimate. The estimate was crazy, uh, very, very low. All, all that estimate told you was that it's gonna, it's, everybody's got a shot at it at that price, because it may have not even had a reserve on it. Uh, any rate, it did very well, 2800 plus the premium, so about 3500 3600 So you'll know what it's worth if you see another one down the road in some group shop somewhere and you come across one and it's marked $150, you know to buy it. All right, and now over to this, the Japanese rag paintings that were in the box. This was a very interesting thing, and, I'm, I'm, and I hope somebody that appreciates it bought it because it didn't bring a lot of money. This, this should have done better. This was a really interesting uh, 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 set of watercolor gouaches that were done, and they had the history. They were in this box, and over here, uh, Mary with uh, Dear Teacher Miss M. L. Graves with Christmas Greetings, and then um, um, from her pupils. So she was an American teacher living and working in Japan, and she was presented this by her students, and each student did one of the one of these pictures and they have their names they sign them in english next to it and you see you see the names hiromoto uh, jamura watanabe hirima all that so th those are her students and they made these pictures for her and they put them in this very lovely box and you know when it was done uh, 1891 um, and there you have these fantastic little watercolors. I, I hope that maybe they went to a museum or something. Look at the tiger, F absolutely outstanding. Wonderfully done, wonderfully done. And uh, the whole lot went for nothing, $250 with 11 of these paintings on, on, on rag paper. Um, I, I'm at a loss for words. I hope one of you bought it. Uh, this was a gem of a thing. It's dated. It's got an interesting side story. Um, you, you know everything there is to know about it. It was done sort of a, a, one of the, the best periods. Of, some of the best things were done during the, that period in the Meiji era. Um, 250 plus premium. So, you know, three and a quarter. Absolute bargain. That was a, maybe that was the bargain of the sale. I don't know. If you're a Japanese buyer, um, that was a bargain. Um, and I, and I, I, if somebody can tell me why they didn't bid on this, if you collect Japanese stuff, I'd love to know. This was a great set of pictures. And then this was up at Thomaston Place, up at, uh, in, in Maine, um, up uh, Thomaston, Thomaston, Maine, Kata Bayou's operation up there. Good auctioneer, nice guy. A little eccentric, but fun. He's always fun. He's always got something fun to say. Very, very straightforward about his business. And uh, he's been there forever. Um, he, his business expanded uh, quite a bit, too, when Jimmy Julia closed down. He had a strong presence in Maine before that. He had now got a stronger presence. So um, if, you wanna, if you're ever in Maine and there's a Thomaston Place auction going, it's worth the day to go, especially in the summer. He holds one, wonderful summer auctions. Um, there was this lot, um, three pieces, including a molded Kang Shi plate. It's about seven inches or so in diameter. And, and the rest of it are late 19th century wares. The whole lot went for six fifty plus the premium. That was a nice little grouping, especially if you're a dealer. And then this, this was, um, who was this? This was a stair gallery, had these. Now these vases had some, some repairs up apparently around the rims, which is very common on these. And maybe a little repairing, uh, a little in painting on the neck somewhere, uh, according to the description. But these are wonderfully painted and very unusually painted. We talked about them a few weeks ago because I, I thought the, the scenes of the, of the horsemen riding around and their mirror pairs. I don't know if you, everybody noticed that. That's maybe partly why they did pretty well. They ended up selling for about 6,500 with the buyer's premium. But these were very nice vases and I think they were over 30 inches tall. Um, 35 inches in height. These were big vases, and I think somebody got a great buy. I thought those were awfully nice. These are the kinds of vases that, if they hadn't had the repair, they probably would have brought 10 or 15,000. Um, but very, very attractive porcelains. And then moseying along over to this. This was uh, the Brunk sale, and I, I put these on the on the newsletter on the um, uh, Global Member pages because these this was a nice Caucasian rug, a nice Kuba type rug. Um, beautiful a red, uh, ruby red, sort of a rich field. The dye saturation on this rug was excellent. Um, there was no wear, uh, 19th century carpet, very beautifully paint, uh, 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 woven, and it went for just $300. Uh, that was, the, that was a, a great buy. Um, uh, you, if you check uh, rug shops, uh, uh, better rug shops in New York or Boston or uh, London, um, rugs like this cost about $2,500 to $4,000. Um, so, so somebody got a really, really good buy on that. Uh, uh, absolutely amazing. And somebody got a very good buy on this. This was a Boutou carpet that was sold at Bonhams. 
Um, it was five by seven feet, so it was a big rug. It was in wonderful condition. I love these blue on blue carpets with the floral pattern in the middle. This was a very pretty rug, woven in the early 19th century, you know, during the Republic period for export, probably 1910 or so. But wonderful colors, beautiful condition. Uh, doesn't look like it's ever really been on a floor. And this went for 550 plus the uh, premium. And where did this sell? This Oh, this sold at Bottoms in Bolton, Massachusetts at Skinner's. Um, that was the steel. That was a very, very good buy. Um, five foot by seven feet. Nice look at rug. Nice look at rug. And then this was at Stair, I think this was, no, Alex Cooper, excuse me. Alex Cooper had this this, uh, the, this huge memorial charger in the middle. Um, and this, I think this really was like 17 inches or something. I want to get it right. Uh, Yongshan era, uh, 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 where are the dimensions? Come on. Yes, uh, uh, yeah, there it is. 16 inches, 16 inches in diameter. That's a very big piece of memorial wear. And they made, and, and these two accessory platters, uh, or plates that went with it um, and sold for 3250 plus the premium. But very, very pretty, very pretty and very early. Um, Yongchen, maybe early Chenlong, but probably Yongchen period. I think they, they got the date on there. They're dating it to uh, 1725. Um, it's, it may well have been from that time, sure. But very nice, very, very nice. And then this was also in that sale. That was this blue and white plate that I've been prattling on about. I just liked it so much. I just thought it was so pretty. Um, our memorial, all in underglaze blue, very, very finely painted. Um, and you can really see it if you, you pull it in. Um, the facial expressions, the, 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 the details in the grass, the, the, the willow tree above and all that. And the two young lovers, the girl on the horse with the, love the bird on the end of the branch. A very symbolic. And uh, she, he, she's being led on an oxen uh, by, the, by the young man. He's, he's taking her with him. Uh, sort of a romantic scene, I think. Um, 3250 plus the premium. So 4000 all in and done. Nice piece of porcelain. And this was a pretty good-sized plate, right? Yeah, 13 and a half inches in diameter. Wasn't it wasn't a, like a six-inch saucer or something. Nice big piece. And then this this was also at Alex Cooper's sale. It was the big gold dragon. Uh, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago because I thought the estimate was so insanely low. And uh, this very, very pretty uh, uh, solid on ground, but Famille Rose decorated with this exuberant gold dragon coming down. There's his head all enameled with his red horns, just about to grab the flaming pearl and all that. But it was very nicely done. It had these very big wave patterns at the bottom. And you can see another dragon coming up out of the sea because in, in Chinese culture, when they depict dragons, they're usually ascending or descending. Um, that's sort of the standard uh, 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 you know, movement for them. But this was a very, very good piece of porcelain. I don't know if it had a couple of repairs in it or not, but it ended up going for a good price. It sold, it's 23 inches in height, sold for 3000 plus the premium, way over the six to $800 estimate. And, I th and, and they obviously knew it would do that, but it, it's, it's, it's fun to see it happen. But a very pretty piece of porcelain. And then this, the Japanese porcelain charger with lacquer that was sold by Akaba down in, uh, I think they're Georgia, is it? Um, oh, D D Dana Beach, Florida, excuse me. Um, uh, this was a nice thing. I talked about it a few weeks ago because I like it so much, and it reminded me a lot of the uh, the lacquered Japanese Kakeomon decorated charger that I have. Now, this had a small repair on the back or, or on one corner uh, over in here, uh, but other than that, uh, I think the decoration and the, um, the phoenix, um, the way it's drawn here with the feathers coming down, um, just uh, oh, overwhelms any concerns about repairs. I'm not worried about this. I thought this was such a good thing. And the gilt and the gilding and the lacquer was all apparently in quite good condition. Um, it would probably been hung on a wall. Wow, it would have been hung on a wall forever. That's why. Um, but there, there's the old repair um, on the back. I, I wouldn't bother touching that. Uh, this is a nice, nice thing. And I know one of you who bought, I know who one, I heard from the person that bought this. She's a very happy person. Uh, this is a beautiful piece of porcelain, a beautiful charger. And it's good size. Um, it was uh, 18 inches in diameter, very big, uh, you know, 19th century work. Really terrific, really terrific. I love, always buy the atypical and beautiful. Uh, that's a, uh, you usually can get a good buy. Um, and the reason this doesn't sell for more is that a lot of people that are sort of newbies to Japanese art don't know what this is. And people that have been collecting for a little bit, a little bit of time will go, wow, that's cool. And, and recognize it's not something you see every day. And, um, 
that's a way to build an interesting collection. And then this, the uh, little beach with the figures in it. And I'm just showing this because we, we talked about these in the past because they turned up. And, and years ago, these you'd find these in antique shops. And the dealers, if they didn't know anything about Chinese art, sold them basically as junk porcelain. And uh, around New England, you would find these beach with the figures in them um, um, in, in, little, in little antique shops. And they might be 25 or $30. And that wasn't that long ago, maybe 30 years ago. And uh, collectors and dealers would spot them and snap them up real fast. Uh, because they didn't make a lot of them. They're actually kind of kind of rare. We've seen a few of them over the last six or eight months, but not many. And uh, this is they, they do well. This one brought $1,700. I think there was one at Christie's or Sotheby's that brought even more at one point not long ago. This was at the stair sale. Uh, but these are rare birds. But you keep your eye out. If you're going through antique shops and traveling around the countryside, Check always check the cases, the small cases for these kinds of porcelains because they get tucked in there. And if the person doesn't know any better, he's going to think this from about this was from about 1950. And most dealers would put a price on it of about maybe, maybe today, maybe $75. So you, you know to buy it. You know to buy it. All right, and then over to here. Oh, before we get into um, a couple of a couple of things that are uh, coming up, um, I got an email from a guy today, and uh, he's a, a, a sort of a newish collector, and he he bought something from one of the auction houses that we've talked about in the past that are not honest um, down in the south. This one is in Florida, um, so some of you know who it is, and um, he he I don't think he, he get he's a subscriber. Uh, to the to the Patreon um, or to the global member pages where we have the report card, and uh, he spent six thousand dollars, over six thousand dollars, and he's 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 sort of up a creek without a paddle, I'm afraid. Um, uh, hopefully, he's get, he's getting a lawyer involved in all this. But um, if if you're sort of new and you you're not, you don't know all the auction houses. Um, either join the global pages or join us over on Patreon. One or the other gives you access to these. Um, I felt so, I, I'm only mentioning this. I'm not trying to push everybody into it, but I, I emailed back and forth with this guy today. He's such an honest guy, earnest guy. He's trying to learn the stuff, and to, to have that happen in no recourse um, uh, because you have no recourse. If you buy something from if people, say, "Well, I'm, I'm going to put it on my credit card. I can get my money back." No, you can't. No, you can't. You absolutely cannot. I've never heard of it anyway. And the reason is, is that they all have terms of service agreements that prevent you from getting your money back because on the term of service agreement, you agree that they may be completely wrong in the price and have no value and age and may have no idea what they're talking about. And it's all on you. It's caveat emptor in its purest sense. And uh, uh, that's the way it is. And, and I know people out there, they've told me in the past, they bid on things in auctions. And I'll say, why are you bidding on it in that auction house? I said, they're crooks. Yeah, but if I pay for it and I don't like it, I can get my money back. And they're shocked to hear, no, you cannot. I've never heard of a credit card company refunding a fraudulent purchase from an auction house, ever. If it doesn't show up, if it doesn't get delivered, failure to deliver, all that, that's, that's cause for a refund and, and, and getting them involved. But if you got the piece, and you signed on to that sale. You agreed to the terms of service. And I can tell you that all these corrupt auction houses, the ones that are really bad, the ones that sell nothing but fakes, they all have terms of service that would make a lawyer's eyes water um, trying to get through it all. But basically, you're out of luck. So, uh, you know, use if you subscribe and you're thinking of placing a bid or putting something on your watch list on, on, on live auctioneers or invaluable or something, check, check the report card and see how we rate them. It's very easy to do. There's a search thing. You just put in the name. It'll come up right away and tell you what's wrong with them or what's right with them because there's some good auction houses out there. And if you're new, I'd suggest you stick with only, only buy from auction houses that have an A or a B rating, all right? Not C, D, or God forbid, F. All right, just don't do it. All right, now that's over with. Okay, now let's take a look. These are some of the things I'm, I'm using the, the Patreon portal to get in here, but these are also on the on the global pages. I'm going to show some pieces that have just come up. Uh, this is the uh, Freeman Heinemann sale, and they have a number of, 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 of nifty objects coming up in this collection. And some of them are this is a this is a a, a, a piece that was sold through the John Pierport Morgan collection, and it was sold by Park Bernay Gallery in 1944. And Park Bernay became Sotheby's. So that that was the when Park Bernay was bought in New York City many moons ago, 40 years ago. It, for a while, it was Park Sotheby's Park Bernay, and then it just became Sotheby's. 
but they were a very good auction house. And they and Park and, and Park Vernet had sold these from the Rockefeller collection. There's these nice pair of iron red dragon jars. I, I thought these are great. Underglazed red, underglazed blue. Um, really nicely done. Just very spirited. Um, they're eight, they, they, they're dating them to the 18th century. I haven't seen the, the the bottoms of them, but they also have all the documents in the original catalog for these. If you have any questions, J P Morgan, not Rockefeller, J P Morgan. All right, and then they have this, this nice big tea dust glazed porcelain uh, 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 vase. Uh, they dated as Qing Dynasty. It's got a Qin Lung mark on the bottom. Um, it came out of the Billings, uh, 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 David Billings and, and Beverly uh, Billings. They're collectors that live in Nantucket for many years. Some of you may know of them. If you go to Nantucket, everybody seems to know the Billingses. I've had some some interactions with them a couple, on a couple of occasions. Uh, nice, nice, nice guy. I, yeah, apparently he must have passed away, but I didn't see his name anywhere. But it, I mean, he probably did. He was pretty old. And he had, he had an interesting collection. He was very open with it. He used to show it around to the Historical Society and give talks down there. And uh, he retired to the island. He was a nice man. He told me he bought his house on, he owned a house on Fruit Street on Nantucket and many years ago. And he told me the story. When he first started going there, nobody was going to Nantucket. Everybody was going to Martha's Vineyard. So he decided to go to Nantucket. He was from the New York, New Jersey area. And uh, he bought a house out on Nantucket. And I, I, as I recall, I think he told me the house cost, uh, at the time when he bought it in the 60s, I think it was $22,000 or something. And I think today that house is worth upwards of probably three and a half million dollars. Uh, it was amazing because everybody from New York discovered Nantucket, and they've got an airport and a nice harbor, and 8,000 jets, uh, 8,000 jets take off and leave from the Nantucket airport um, on the week before and the, during the Fourth of July, week before, during the week of the Fourth, and after the week of the Fourth. 8,000 jets, private planes, jets and private planes, I should say. Quite a thing. Anyway, this is also in the sale. This is a very nice um, country period square bottle vase and underglazed blue. Uh, there's this. This is coming up. This is at the Clark Auction Gallery in Larchmont. Uh, the sale is in two days. They've got some nice things. They've got this jade. It's got four bids on it. It's going to do very well. This is a nice 19th century jade. It is beautifully carved. The color is excellent. I mentioned it before, but I'm only mentioning this again because the auction's coming up in a couple of days, and uh, it's going to be on Sunday. Uh, but do check that sale out there in Larchmont, New York. And um, so if you're in the New York area, it's a good auction to go to. Uh, and then this, of course, is the uh, uh, the, the bottoms uh, sale, the, the deaccession lots. Um, just a reminder, everybody, I know I've, we've talked about it a bunch. Uh, go check out that sale. All right. And then over to what's happened at, uh, oh, eBay last week. Right, eBay. Um, it's a pretty good week. Um, this big jar that we talked about last week, it was it was sort of, I think it was just, just had been listed. It ended on, ended Sunday. It had a couple of days to go. I don't know what it was up to when we talked about it, but it jumped at the end. It went up to $3,261 plus the shipping, which uh, seemed pretty reasonable for that jar from Britain. To, that's a big jar. Look at the wine bottle next to it, the Beaujolais bottle. It's a big pot to ship that. And it was 150 pounds to ship it to, to where I am in, in Gloucester, Massachusetts. So he's, he's fairly reasonable with his shipping. This is from a seller named Trust Gives. And he's had good things before. So he's, he's had good things again. And then there's this, this very nice um, little uh, 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 dry brown glazed and underglazed blue uh, vase with a, with a crackled cafe ground. I thought this was a very good buy. And I don't know why it didn't bring more money. I can't think of a reason why. There's the bottom of it. It's a late 19th century example. It's got the, the pretty standard Tendwa mark from the Ming Dynasty on the bottom. Um, it was decent size. Uh, let's see, how tall was it? 37 centimeters, so it was about 14 inches tall. Somebody picked this up for just $134 plus shipping. That was a good buy. It was a very nice piece of porcelain. I thought that would probably, I was in the past, we've seen these sell for five to 700. So that was a very good buy. And then this, this sepia decorated China trade uh, for the American market, probably, um, or the European market, um, a dish from the, from the uh, oh, first, first quarter of the 19th century. They're dating it to 1840. I don't know if it's that late. Could be. I don't think so. The, the detail work looks awfully good on this. And it went for $375, and this was offered by Essex Jewelry and Antiques in Essex, Massachusetts, which is about three miles from where I'm, well, about eight miles from where I'm sitting. Um, I, we had a gal, we had a shop and an auction house and gallery in Essex for many years. Nice town. 
And uh, that time, when they had, when that place was in full swing with the antique shops in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, I, 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 there, were, there were upwards of 40 shops in Essex, 35 shops, I think. A lot of shops, a lot of good shops, too. They were all, many of them were very, very good. And a couple of them are still there, but not many, I'm afraid. They're down to maybe eight um, because of the Internet. Any rate, here we are. Time moves on. Uh, this, the uh, rank badge. Um, uh, I think this was a pretty good buy. I, I, we thought it would bring, you know, 700 to 900, 6 to 800. It brought 600, 660. This was a good buy. This was a nice rank badge. Um, looks like fourth or, or, or fifth rank, something like that. Like I think I said last week, I hadn't, I hadn't looked it up to be absolutely certain. But it was a nice example, 19th century, and uh, went for 665. That was a good buy. That was a nice thing. Genuine. And then this. This was sort of a steal. Uh, this was a 19th century. People don't buy coconut shell cups. I don't know why. They, 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 they used to make spectacular cups out of them and sometimes put silver or, or tin liners in them. There's th this one. This was a nice one. Um, and it just went for $133. I don't know why. There's so little appreciation for, for chi carved Chinese things out of organic material. And there's the interior of it. It had this nice metal rim added onto it. It looks like, yeah, it, had a, it looks like it had a metal rim, maybe. No, oh, it's just the shine. It was just polished. And there's the interior of it. That's how they often look. That's why they often would put uh, tin or silver liners in them. But this was a nice old cup. Nice old cup. And uh, 133 Absolute steel. That was a nice thing. And then moving along to this, the vase. Uh, it's sort of an 18th century style vase, uh, but, but done in the late 19th century um, with these flanged, flanged edges. Sold for 565 Nice piece of porcelain, I must say. Uh, very pretty, good shape. And then this robe, this this uh, skirt rather, this skirt, skirt really took off. And the reason is the ground color, very unusual. This aubergine ground color, and very finely the, the needlework on this was exceptional. Um, and also the way the butterflies and flowers going down the pleats. Uh, this was a beautiful piece. It looked like it was in quite good condition, from what I could tell. Um, uh, it had a little, oh, it had some fabric separation here. That you could sew back on. That's not a big deal. A um, few loose threads, and the guy pointed out every last one of them. Good for him. That's the way to do it. And uh, it, it did very well. Uh, brought $1,051, uh, but, but worth it. Uh, Chinese skirts have really come a long way. Uh, it wasn't that long ago that Chinese skirts and auctions, you'd have an auction, and you'd have a box with maybe three skirts in it, and they were of this quality. And the whole box would sell for, oh, God. In the 90s, 200 bucks, something like that, maybe. Maybe 300 for three of these. Uh, it was very, very inexpensive. And now look, bingo. And then last is this, the Cafe Ole with the Femi Ver decorations. This is a very nice little bowl. It had a couple of hairlines in it, but I thought it was charming with the spotted deer and these the butterflies flying over. Just a nice little bowl. Very simple. Not trying to be anything that's not. Looked like a, um, I can't even see what that mark is. It's so faded. Um, Maybe somebody with younger eyes. Tung Chi Mark, maybe? No. Chin Lung Mark. Okay. So it's going to, it looks like it has a Chin Lung. I can't really see it. I think it's a Chin Lung Mark. Anyway, it went for just $81 or 63 pounds. Uh, but that was a nice buy. That was a good little cup. Interestingly done. Unusual color palette. You know, and there you go. And that's sort of it for the week. Um, uh, there's going to be a lot. Like I said, we're going to be doing the Sotheby's uh, videos, and we got a couple more we want to try to get out before the sales. We got plenty. I think we got some time, and um, I hope everybody's uh, like the Christie's uh, uh, video from yesterday. There's some interesting things. They had some nice things. Um, the, 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 the Goldman collection, uh, some great objects in there, and uh, you know, do check it out. Don't be intimidated by Christie's. You know, register and buy from them. Um, you, it's it's a, it's a very good place to shop. All right, oh, the phone's ringing. Thanks for thanks for watching. Bye bye.